Hello everybody, I'm Nick and a few weeks ago I made a video about GitHub Copilot when I first got into the technical preview and I was very impressed with its skills to autocomplete and suggest c -sharp, even in that early stage. However, many of the comments, even though most of them were very positive, some of them were skeptical about this and they said that yes, it works because I know how to pick and choose the right suggestions. And to a huge degree, I agree. But there's also another side of this where in the hands of an inexperienced or junior developer, this technically can be very dangerous. And I agree. And I want to see how dangerous. And the way to do that is password hashing. One of the most common things that inexperienced or junior people will do, especially on personal projects, is they will opt in to do their own password manager instead of using something like Firebase or some any other third party auth provider for some reason. Now, I'm going to assume that I know that storing in plain text is a bad idea and I also assume that I know what's the difference between encryption and hashing and I know that I'm going for hashing here. So with all that said, let's see how me, a junior dev now, will perform with Copilot's help. If you like the of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe by hitting the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's go here in this project and all I have is a simple startup.cs, I'm going to clear that. And I'm going to go straight here and create a password hasher because I want to hash passwords. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say public string and it knows I want that. Now, here's the suggestion. It suggests I create a hash method that accepts a password and returns the password. Like it didn't do anything. How is that a, a suggestion? And Obviously, this won't work, but let's go ahead and do like password hasher equals new password hasher here and then just, you know, result equals password hasher dot hash and let's say Nick1234, here we go, and then console dot write line and write this in the console and as you'd expect, we didn't do anything as expected. Now, I'm going to give it another shot. I'm going to just delete that and maybe open the suggestions window and see what we get. Yeah, that's not helping. That's just an empty string. That's not helping. You're just adding one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three at the end. Oh, how are those suggestions? And the last one, ironically, is a good one, but it's, it would be good if I knew what Bcrypt is. Bcrypt is technically fine to use if you understand what Bcrypt is. And maybe it's a good point where you go to Google and you search, you know, what is Bcrypt. But at that point, you might also just search how to securely hash algorithms or hash passwords in .NET. So is it useful for me, Nick? Yeah, because I would just go to here, NuGet, search for Bcrypt, and I know that this is part of Bcrypt.net. I just add it. And as you can see, now I have hashing with Bcrypt. A junior dev wouldn't know any of that. So that's out of the question for us again. And I'm going to go back and open suggestions. And obviously this wouldn't work. So let's say hash password this time and give it a bit more context and see if that actually makes any difference. And open suggestions, it didn't. Okay, let's help it a bit. Now, one of the things that I know from the few things I've read on the internet is that SHA is pretty good. So we're going to say hash password using SHA. I didn't specify a number, I just said SHA, that's what I read about. So let's see suggestions. And now I got this. Hex from bytes, I don't know what hex is. i maybe just go with that. And now I have SHA1 managed. And if I go here and I say hash password and I print it, da -da, this looks like a hash. Big win. However, it's not a big win. It is a disaster because first, this class is obsolete. You shouldn't be using it then you shouldn't be using a stage one for anything other than quick hashes where their integrity isn't mission critical and ultimately you shouldn't be writing any code like that now here is me i do a bit of research maybe i want to start diving into 256 which i've read is pretty good nowadays so let's say what the suggestions are here um get string from hash do i need that method really can you just give me the... That works. So this is not obsolete. Fine. Hashes the password and returns it. So now I have a decent hash here. Again, we have a problem. In, in database leaks, you might get the full table with passwords. And when two hashes match, you know, every time I hash this thing, 
nick1234 and say result again, and I print it. If I do that, the hashes are the same, which means that if two people in the database use the same password and I can correlate email with password and I crack one, then I instantly cracked everyone else with the same password. So we don't want to do that. We want to have a salt in the mix. So let's now say delete that. And by the way, I'm assuming I'm doing some reading on the side. Ultimately, if I didn't, I would have failed this challenge. You know, I would have created some really, really easy to crack passwords. Still not plain text, but not great. So let's see random salt. I didn't specify the size, but it, it created anyway. You know what? Let's go with the first one. I don't know what all these things are doing. So hash password salt. Let's create the overload, I guess. It goes for a comment because it thinks that's the approach I'm going to go with. What's the salt? Salted password. So it adds the salt to the password. Yes, but I have to provide the salt. So let's generate the salt. Okay, you, you got that. Can you give me the method? You want to like, suggest something? Cool. Now, I didn't specify a size, and this just generated a 32-byte salt, which is a bit of an overkill, if you ask me, for what we're doing, but okay. So technically, it did that, meaning if I run this, now I'm getting two different hashes from that salted password. And how do we verify that, right? Let's, let's verify. No. I want to say verify password. That's it. Uh, get sold. We don't really have a get sold method, but let's go ahead and let it know. I don't want to generate. I want to get the sold. So get sold. So, you know, it assumes that I have a delimiter here, which is a dollar sign, but I don't have anything like that. The sold just isn't present in the password, which it should, because then I would be able to just get a delimiter and split it and get the salt and match, but I can't. So all this is basically useless. And you're in this pitfall now where you're like, why is this suggesting this? And how can I add the delimiter? And I can turn this into something that makes sense, but ultimately I lost. That's not what I want. Now, I do a bit more reading and I read that, and that's common information in, in .NET, that the default algorithm for passwords is pbkdf with SHA-256 with a salt of 128 bits and also 10,000 iterations. So let's put that in a comment. Hash password using pbkdf2 with SHA, yes, it was a good suggestion, 256 with not a random salt, 108 bit salt and 10,000 iterations. That's what I want. So can you give me that? Please. Can you redeem yourself? Uh, you can. Let's accept you. Okay, so key... I can't pronounce this word. Derivation? Key der derivation? Yeah, let's just say that. Now, this exists in ASP.NET Core, and the reason why I can use that is because the project is a web project, technically, so I can have access to that library. Uh, I don't know if that's random or not, but you don't have to use that. Technically, there is also the RFC this class, which can also help you do the same thing as you can see here. We don't need to, we're just going to use that. Then this is the right size as well. The salt is 128 bits divided by 8 produces and a 16 uh, byte salt. And this will give me what I want if I remove the static thing here, because I don't need it. And I run this, this is good. However, I still do not have the salt in the actual generated thing. And that's a problem because I can't extract it to actually use it. So let's now give it a chance. And at this point, I'm taking over as Nick to just properly do this. Um, this isn't working. No, I want something that puts the salt on the return type. Come on, really? You're not gonna give me a salted? That's ridiculous. Okay, let's do it manually. So salt is here and then var hash Password here is that. God damn it. And then the the salt would be like something like this. So you have, let's put the salt first. So convert to base 64 string. At this point, it's just cheating. Salt, maybe use the delimiter like a dot and then a hash password. And what this is doing now is 
I can actually pick up the salt from the beginning to the dot and then use that to verify the password. So now let's say verify the password is correct. And it has, yeah, okay, you are good with the comment. Give me the method. Please understand the delimiter. Be smart about this. Yes. Thank God. Okay. So gets the salt, gets the hash, short hash. Uh, do we want to compare with that? Let's not overthink it. Let's just, just, let's go for it. So we have the two hashes. Fine is valid equals password hash dot verify password. And it is Nick one, three, four. We go. And then result console. The right line is valid. Let's do this. False is not valid, even though it should be true. And I think that's because it used the wrong thing in the comparison. Hashed password, hashed password is here, fine, but you're not comparing against the full thing. You only want to compare it against the, the latter, which is a byte array. And the other thing is base 64. So actually this doesn't need to be that. And now we can compare it. And now it's true. And if I change it to three, now it's false. So now we have a decent implementation. However, it just wouldn't take us there without me sweating. It's interesting. And at the end of the day, it just shows how much of a companion it is more than anything. Don't rely on it for code. It won't replace us anytime soon. I've seen these comments just, they're funny to read, but realistically don't worry. I say that now, like someone will send this to me in five years when this is writing everything for me. But yes, you are right. Whoever is skeptical about this, this is not perfect. I don't think it will ever be perfect, but at least it can make writing all this boilerplate boring code simpler for people who understand them. And at the end of the day, that's what it is. A pair programming tool. It's a suggestion. It's a do this maybe. And then you have to say yes or no, like in pair programming. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making the videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.